very, very important in this industry, you know, yeah. and uh, there's a couple of uh, really high powered agents right now that are in bad health. I don't want to even say their names, but uh, they're in my prayers and I hope they, they get through it all. But, you know, they're some of the best, some of these best agents that have been around for a long, long time. You know, they're all getting older and things happen with your health when you get older, unfortunately. And uh, it's just I've been really blessed to be to go through what I've been through and still be here working uh, and doing what I love to do best to sell homes. And uh, this was a particular special one, too, because it was for Larry H. Parker. So I might be on the commercial again. <laughs> he, he, he's actually on one of the uh, commercials. I've actually seen him in Rocio. I don't know if you remember Rocio. She uh, she does the one in Spanish, and he, he's the one doing it in English. Awesome. But uh, yeah, that's the attorney that divorced him. Everything happened. His wife called me. You know, says, "Geez, he, you know." He's really thinking about twice. He's trying to really get out of this. I said, tell him not to worry. Tell him I will fight for him. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it came on good when I said that. She was laughing so hard. So we actually had a we had a good time uh, out the desert and uh, was very very successful weekend. Although we didn't get to enjoy any of the desert, but. Uh, we did go out for a couple of nice meals and uh, and we did see a lot of properties. And uh, matter of fact, I just got hired to find another one in La Quinta this morning. So it uh, was worth the trip. So maybe I'll uh, I'll pull two out. Maybe you never know. I'll pull the hat trick, <laughs> get get three down there. So once since I'm down there, but uh, you know, it's, but but this has been a blessing. You know, to to drive down to the desert. You know, to find something in the weekend because nothing is lasting more than 10 days on the market there. So it's very, very, very hard to sell a house down there. You actually have to go down there and buy it within a weekend. The market is moving like it's never moved before down the desert. Everything since I've been down there in 2017, there's 300 more percent improvements. And uh, on the desert in La Quinta and Palm Desert, all these improvements, it's going to be the number one spot to go. So uh, that's why the property is selling like hotcakes down there. That's awesome. Good stuff. Thanks for, uh, thanks for sharing, uh, Jim. <clears throat> let's, uh, let's go ahead and continue on. I was going to say let's have one more, but uh, I think uh, Jim wrapped it up for us. So thanks again. You know, before I, I continue with the slide, I, I, I got to say, you know, it's been a year in the making to actually see faces in the office, guys. This is, this is like, um, I'm totally in shock because I remember last year in March when the office, you know, literally shut down, staff was uh, working remotely from, from home. I was still coming into the office every single day. And even though I was, you know, stuck in the, uh, in the conference room, you know, thinking, okay, this is something totally, totally different. I don't know how to approach it. How do I have the engagements and ultimately shift our uh, way and how we do business? You know, it was lonely in here. And now a year later, the momentum of not just the office, right? The office being renovated and the remodel, but more so the, the engagements that were literally getting that touch and feeling of having agents back in the office. So that just makes me feel super stoked, super happy to see all these wonderful people in the office. So I just got a applaud for them. That's just... I guess most of you as well. It's pretty happy, you know, it's it's time to party, right? It's hard to have these uh, these uh, classes. And I was talking to Sonia as well. You know, let's let's make this a uh, place like you know we are so accustomed to here at KW. So. Awesome stuff. Are we having some issues? Uh, oh, I was just sorry. That was my fault. I was just telling Matt that when we have people talking, it's it would be nice to see their face. <laughs> uh, so thank okay. you, Matt. But it made your screen go small. So. <laughs>
Got it. All right. Do we yeah. have to look at you? <laughs> there you go. That was awesome. Thank That's... you. All right. Our motivational minute success isn't about how much money you can make, it's about the difference you make in people's lives. You know, absolutely. You know, this is something that I truly, truly believe is you can make all the money in the world, but without the happiness and the, the people that you surround yourself with, you know, you cannot really take it to that to that next level. So it's a, just a great testimonial to really uh, know that the motivation, the inspiration that we do on a daily and the grunt of what we do on a daily basis as well is, you know, the consistency and the persistency of your daily habits. So, you know, spot on for today's uh, motivational minute. All right, let's, uh, let's continue. What do we got next? All right, July's birthdays. God, what happened? My birthday just was last month. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone. No more June. So congratulations. Happy, happy birthday to all the uh, July babies. We got Bianca, Bill, Alex, Kawad, Candice, uh, Lynette, Lance, Amir, uh, Rosie. Hey, happy birthday. Sandy, <laughs> Lee. Alberto, Ashley, Victor, Betty, Mass, Anna, Hiroshi, Elise, Miguel, Donna, and uh, Robin uh, Briggs. Uh, are you on <laughs> July 30th. July 30th. So you're at the end of the uh, month. And yeah. yours, Rosie? 18. Uh, the 18. All right. So oh, like to celebrate. Fun time. Fun time. Fun time. So, well, happy, happy birthday to, uh, to both of you. All right. So Awesome. So let's, uh, I, I like that video. <laughs> go back real quick on that. <laughs> now, can you go back to the uh, previous slide? <laughs> I just. That's it, right? No, the uh, birthday one. Real quick. Oh, that's it. Simon, it's right there. It's this right one. Yeah, oh, I, I just see it on my end. Okay. This is a funny uh, video clip. You know, I guess the father <laughs> is uh, blocking the uh, child from blowing up the candles. And they, I'm, I'm assuming that's a sibling or your brother there. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's hilarious. Thanks to uh, Natalie for. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, he's pissed. He's really like, come on, Dad. Come on. Yeah, I know. He's, he's upset. Awesome. Thank you, Matt. Let's go ahead and continue with the slide. All right, so congratulations to our July uh, anniversary. So, Jim, congrats. Melinda, Mark, uh, Hilda, Spencer, Bill, Camille, uh, Luz, Ed. All right, Ed, you're on this list. He's <laughs> like, I didn't know I was on this list. <laughs> Philip, James, Kevin Clark, Lee, Ben, uh, Serena, uh, Clinique, uh, um, 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 I don't even know how to pronounce his name. <laughs> Julia, so I apologize. I'm putting that disclaimer. Rama, Heather, Aaron, awesome. Happy anniversary. It's only been a year. I know. It's just like, geez, man, I can just remember. It took me a year to get to this year. <laughs> <laughs> so congratulations, Aaron. We're going to have you part of our team. Uh, He's still working on getting logged in to come out. <laughs> That's not what funny, is that? but it is funny. <laughs> Luke, I'm even surprised Luke is on this list. I remember having a conversation and Luke is doing phenomenal, phenomenal business. You were ancient and he's just crushing it. So uh, that's awesome to see him as well. And everyone on this list, uh, Lauren and Candace uh, Garcia. So congratulations to all the uh, anniversaries for the uh, month of July. Woohoo! Awesome. Let's continue. All right, congratulations, Mr. Stephen Ryan or Kathy. Is uh, Stephen on the call? I think I hear Stephen. Hey, Stephen, how are you? Oh, I'm doing well. Hey, <laughs> Stephen, I just want to congratulate you for uh, Kathy. How did you do it? Well, it's consistency, it's just getting plugged in. <laughs> really, that's what I preach all the time. What's, what are you doing differently? Nothing out of the ordinary. It's just the same one. Thank you, Congratulations. This is not being recorded because I know Simon. He said, he said, have seen this. He said, darn Simon. I'm going to say, Simon, I'm going to Congratulations, uh, Kayoko, uh, for capping as well. That is awesome. Kayoko. 
introduce you, Jeannie Jen. And I'm so thrilled, so excited that she's coming downstairs now. So she's been upstairs at our upstairs office. So she's going to be uh, working remotely. Well, take it back. She's going to be working in an office down here. So we're super excited to have her down here as part of the synergy and, uh, you know, where everything is happening. So uh, we're super stoked and happy for uh, Kyoko and Kathy. So awesome. Let's continue. All right, top performers for the month of June. Who do I see here? Louis Palacios, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk real quick, Louis. You'll tell me what are you doing differently to uh, get into this list. Yeah, consistency. Consistency. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's really all it is. It's just keeping on those cold leads that you know you might think are never going to come to fruition yeah and you know they always do i love it just kind of keep at it keep at it obviously Anna and I have been, she's been such a huge asset to the team so yeah yeah awesome that's so cool awesome thank you gary you're on this list too so tell us <laughs> and don't say consistency i, 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 I take the word the split it all to know is i have probably one of my best month in june uh -huh. and there are better people so that no. tells you. Wait, 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 wait. Better people. What do you. <laughs> better agents in the office. They did better, you know, in June. Oh, so, and uh, we got to show you uh, the next slide. So uh, that just tells you how great an office we have. Uh, and, you know, we, we, we can have top producers here and they can bring better well here. So if you know any agent that's doing very well out there, say, hey, we've got great agents here that you can be, you know, a uh, big show of them. I think it's all possible. Yeah, it's really like telling the story, right? I mean, you you and the rest of the agents are pillars out in the uh, field. You're having the conversations with agents, and ultimately, you can you can be of service, not just in the recruiting aspect, but the engagement of conversation and allowing Ed, myself, and Sonia to you know hone in those conversations deep, and you know provide them with the value proposition of why they should be here with us. And on top of the dynamics of the training, educations, the systems in place, the models in place, it's just really good place to be, right? Absolutely. It's the what we call the synergy, right? The yeah. synergy of the office. Yeah. And you know as much as I know, and most of you that have been in this office for quite some time, you used to have some rocking uh, events here, yeah. you know? And bringing back that is, is, is crucial and very important. And you know, for the most part, a lot of offices to this day are still closed, guys. Literally closed. There's offices that are still working remotely, and we want to be different, right? We want to think outside the box, do things a little different, and approach it in the in a different parameter. And this is the reason I love the engagement of being in the office and seeing all of you in the uh, in the training room. It's just super exciting. Can so, I add there on, on the next place? Uh, so last week was it J July first? We did the the mid year review thing, which yeah, we kind of yeah. threw, we threw it together in like a few days time because I was like, oh my god, at the end of QT, we should do some sort of mid year review, and uh, so we talked the business planning, planning something I've taught for years. I, I love teaching it, and we had about thirty people, right? About half half of you guys were on Zoom, about half in the office, and it was really fun. You could feel the energy, and and uh, so we're going to continue to do more stuff like that. Uh, as far as the business planning clinic, we're going to teach the full version of that later on in July. In a, in October to plan for 2022, which is, I can't believe I'm saying that, uh, but we got uh, a, a big plan of things that are going to be rolling out. I, I've got a new series that's going to come out first week of August. I know you, you've talked about a few things. Sony's got some other stuff rolling out. We've got bold, I mean, there's just, so the, the stuff that we got rolling out is really, really going to be fun for, for everybody. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. I I would add to that, um, that, you know, you guys, we used to bring so many people in monthly. Um, and then of course, testing center shut down and everybody shut down for a while. And last month, uh, you know, we were at 10 again, 10, 10 new agents joining us and definitely the office makes a difference, right? I, I, I mean, <laughs> when you're in a nicer office, it's just kind of like, where do I sign? <laughs> um, obviously. So it's really helping us and we're just excited to have the new blood and new energy in here. So let's get stuck. Yeah. It feels like it's rolling again. Oh, yeah. Just so you know, Gary doesn't have time to talk to anybody. He's busy bringing business. <laughs> 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 so, 
If you know, if you know Gary, I mean, this guy is uh, unstoppable. I mean, I think you were probably here uh, on Sunday and Monday for me, you know, he, he doesn't know what a holiday is. He doesn't know what night is. He's like constantly here working. But that's the end results of what the uh, what he brings to the table, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, Gary. All right, so congratulations to all. Kelly, uh, Derek, it's awesome to see Derek consistent again on this uh, top producer list. Uh, Stephen Ryan, Gary Nix, Wendy, Michelle Brown, Frank Denny, Lillian Wang, uh, Kayoka, Maureen Lee, Louis Palacio, and Jim Sipola. So congratulations. All right, I'm super stoked on the next slide. All right. This is the place to Come join the party. This is actually a little different, you know, because the engagement, I mean, it's hard to interact with people on Zoom, right? But now it's like, I'm kind of tossing and turning. It's like a camera, and then here, the camera is like, oh, we, we were together. talking about this. I was on, on a call a couple of days ago. Like, you know, it's going to get to be like where we start to do the people on the Zoom is going to be an afterthought. Where, you know, I mean, nothing against you guys. We love you, but we hope you can make it here. You know, um, it's just it's, it's easier to be here all together in one place. You know, on the computer, it looks like there's like two or three people. Yeah, <laughs> right. Well, like in the folks on Zoom, this is a disclosure right now. Get to the office on our next team meeting. Love to see. We've got plenty of space. We've got this beautiful uh, 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 office now. But spacious uh, uh, space here to uh, have these uh, meetings. So next uh, team meeting, we want to see everyone that's on the call here in person. I'm just putting that up. I guess come down here and get remotivated because you know. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Gary moved down here, and so my inspiration for <laughs> working 24/7. You guys disappeared over the last week. Gary, uh, very Gary Nick works harder than. Uh, I've been in this business 40, going on 44 years. He's one of the hardest, most dedicated workers in the real estate that I've seen in a long time. So, yeah, uh, that's, you know, when you work hard, you get success. So, well, you have that me, I just want to kick back right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to make two and a half million dollars a year anymore. <laughs> but he's, uh, he's like a machine. Yeah. So, yeah, Congratulations, Gary. So. Yeah, he's awesome. All right, so uh, thank you. Thank you for sharing that, uh, Jim. So the uh, June closings, look at, I was impressed and I was super excited. It's like the momentum, you know, we had a phenomenal month of June and here's the end results. Look at all these uh, amazing agents that closed, Carmenza, Lynette, Al, Sako, May, Brandon, Donna, Melinda, Zen, Thomas, Roy. Joanne, Sophia, Sophia, gosh, you know, she just joined us. First deal. Yeah, so that's awesome to see her on the list. Uh, Kayoko, Ashley, Robin, Anna, Derek, Fred, Kayoko. Did I see Kayoko twice or was it? Um, Vera. Ah, Vera, congrats. Where's Vera? There she is. Awesome. And Anna, you passed Anna. Anna, Anna, Anna too. Yeah. Anna. Oh, Anna. Oh, Anna. 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 And Lydian, Leonard, uh, Marie Lee. Gay Michelle, Champagne, Gary, Lewis, Wendy, uh, Amante, Stephen Ryan, Philip, Stephen Ryan, Alicia, Lisa, Kelly, uh, Sammy, Robert, Lillian, Camilla, and Jim Sopola. Also, uh, well, the awesome. synergy's been unbelievable in my Wells Fargo account. <laughs> was, uh, I'm seventh level as far as profit sharing. Yeah, yeah, we so, have. Uh, uh, Almost three thousand dollars in the last three months. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're over twenty five hundred bucks. For anybody who doesn't know what Jim is talking about, profit share and all that, uh, Sony and I are going to be teaching a class on profit share here in the next couple of weeks, and it's something we're going to start teaching at least every other month, if not every month. And hopefully, you can join us, Jim, for the for the first one. I'll testimonial at least, and give, give us a little Absolutely. testimonial how it all works. But uh, it, yeah, there's a, there's a way of getting passive income through KW. You don't even have to do much at all and uh, come learn all about how to get a passive income stream. I recruited only like 30 people, 40, 35 people in my last 16 years. 
but I have like 198 in my downline. So that's so amazing. So <laughs> yeah, and with a nice office, there's so much opportunity for your profit share, really. Like it it does really make a difference in terms of people joining. And then we have systems in place to get them to be profitable as well. Right. So um, it's a great office to bring them into now that we're out of the hole. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You recruit one bunny. And the other bunnies make bunnies. That's so. right. <laughs> <laughs> and I got a lot of rabbits. You are <laughs> in the <laughs> Hey. hey. <laughs> Just got to know where to recruit. The, yeah. most, the, 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 the least amount of thing you think that people are not going to do is I recruited relatives from back in New York City to for Keller Williams. And, you, you don't have to just recruit here, you can recruit anywhere. Yeah, that's the beauty. So it's that's the beauty of it. You know, of course you want to recruit him for a brand new office over here. And now this is the time that nobody has an office like this in South Bay. Yeah, but like we are, of... should be the number one office. We should have another 10 capitalists join this office just because of how beautiful it is right now. All right, so I hear a commitment from Jim. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, we got to continue, Jim. We got to continue. All right. continue. All right, next slide, please. <laughs> so uh, just to uh, testify of what Sonia, yeah, we had a phenomenal month of June. We brought in 10 uh, agents to uh, the KW family. So here's a list of some that were on the list, but ultimately we ended up having 10 new agents for the month of June. So we're super excited and, um, and stoked about the fact that there were uh, now the Department of Real Estate and agents are starting to feel the uh, the opportunities of coming back to an office. So congratulations to the entire leadership team uh, for doing their jobs and, uh, you know, staying dedicated and commitment and committed, and committed to, uh, you know, having those connections and, and setting those uh, parameters super high. So this is uh, the beginning of more to happen. You know, our consistency is to have at least minimum 10, 15, 20 per month, you know, the more the merrier. This is the office to definitely be. So again, congratulations. Welcome to uh, the KW family, to the list of uh, new agents for the month of June. Awesome, next slide, please. All right, so briefly, let me talk about the uh, Summer Mastermind that's coming up on July 21st. Uh, it's a uh, jam-packed day of learning and masterminding. You will hear from the areas of uh, guest top producer executives from the uh, KW Maps coaching and collaborate with like-minded uh, individuals overcoming obstacles uh, within your business. So this is a summer mastermind uh, taking place this uh, month on the 21st. Register at masterminds.kw.com. And I believe uh, the cost, oh, it's right here, it's $49. Uh, $49. So it's a great investment and an opportunity to again engage in the Keller Williams platform, but more so, you know, be involved in like-minded people. So take full advantage, July twenty-first uh, for the summer mastermind. Okay, if you have any questions, please let us know as well. Next slide, Mega Camp. Mega Camp. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna have Ed and uh, Sonia talk a little bit about Mega Camp as well. So Mega Camp is August twenty-third through the twenty-sixth. You can register at megacamp.kw.com. If you sign up uh, prior to July 8th, you get a uh, discount. Uh, and I believe the uh, early bird special is $109. So please, please, please take full advantage of Mega Camp. It's still going to be done virtually this year. But guess what? Next year, uh -uh, we're going to Austin, Texas. So uh, take full advantage. Now, we also have another promotion going on for anyone that likes to go to Las Vegas. So we're also <laughs> doing Las Vegas, oh, you know, who is uh, interested, but the price is a little bit higher. If you have any questions, please uh, email me or call the office and we'll give you more information on that. So anything you'd like to add to that? Uh, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll want to add to this because, yeah. okay, so... so in Austin, Texas, where Mega Camp usually is, they, there's a lot of restrictions there. They're only allowing the five thousand, and they might they might up it a little bit to ten thousand, but that's much less than what they normally take in Austin, Texas. So we can't. I, I like only a, only a few select agents were were invited. Gary Nix is one that's going from our office. Yeah. He got invited as a top producer. Uh, I think Sonia's going with, with PWYP. Is that right? Nah, I'm going to Vegas. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> <right. laughs> well, so when all this came out, we're all like, okay, so we're all going to do. 
We're going to do mega camp virtually from the office and do it via Zoom. We'll have a watch party at the office. And I was like, all right, you know, we all got to do what we got to do. And then I was on this call with, all, with these folks from the Northwest region. We're all, uh, there are Nevada, uh, Oregon, I believe it is, and, and these other places. And they were all talking about, hey, we, got this guy, we just got the green light to do a, uh, an event in Las Vegas at the Mirage. And we're all going to do like watch parties and breakout sessions and all this in Vegas. And I was like, son of a bitch, that sounds so fun. What? <laughs> And we're, you yeah, know, I mean, I love our new office and all, but hey, man, it's Vegas. And, <laughs> and, we, and we're supposed to go for family reunion, but it never ended up happening. So I was all bummed out. And then next thing you know, we were on a call with Stacey States, who announced all this, like, hey, we've joined forces. So we all got invited to join them, just our region and their region. We're doing this joint event in Vegas for, fam for Mega Camp, uh, August 23rd to 26th. I hope, I mean, I'm so looking forward to it. I, I think, in all honesty, I think this is going to be more fun than Mega Camp typically is in Austin, Texas. I just, I, I do. I, I, there, there's a bunch of really cool top producing agents who are, who are going out of their way to, to, to have cool watch parties and, and conversations afterwards. So I think it's going to be like the best yeah. of both worlds. I, I, I really do. So I'm, I'm excited to go. Hopefully uh, a lot of you guys will go there too. If you can't go to Vegas, uh, you can do it via Zoom and that will be really cool as well. Uh, but I, I really hope a lot of you will, will join us all and we'll have fun in Vegas. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Sonia, anything to add? Um, that, you know, just, uh, I think it's going to be more networking oriented in Vegas. And um, Vegas, you know, we have issues with showing up to class at 8 a.m. So <laughs> <laughs> that's why we don't go there. <laughs> no one shows up to the masterminds. No, so, so, but I think, you know, it's just a, People are really wanting that, and for us, I, it's so close. Why wouldn't you go? Yeah. So anyone can go. Absolutely. Yeah. So again, take full advantage of it. August twenty third to the twenty uh, sixth, either via Zoom or come and join us in Vegas. As uh, Ed was saying, we have one fortunate uh, agent that was uh, uh, allowed to go to make a camp out in Austin, Texas, and that's Gary Gary Nix. He was one of few selected. Uh, to be able to participate, make it you know, out in the office. So we're super excited over that. So, so no one tell Gary that we're all going to Vegas. We'll just be <laughs> like, oh, after, yeah, I wish we could go. <laughs> no, we're going to try to have fun here in the training room, but you go to, you go to Austin and have fun there. And so we'll all, keep, we'll all keep them off of our social media for, for three days on yeah. the <laughs> awesome. All right. So again, if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to reach out to the office and again, register and make camp kw.com. All right, let's go ahead and continue. I think the next is the uh, calendar. As all of you should be aware, we have our calendar. Uh, yeah. Play. Calendar. There we go. <laughs> So here's our weekly uh, calendar. You know, we have uh, our miracle morning that starts at seven o'clock. We have classes till four o'clock. Every day there's something going on. If it's not a market center, uh, international or regional, there's something for everyone. Even Sonia's classes here. Sonia and I will be teaching uh, on this Friday the 9th, I believe, what time is it? 12, 12 to 3? Yep. 12 to 3, we're gonna be having a negotiation workshop so please uh, take full advantage. It'll be in person, okay? But we'll also uh, broadcast it via Zoom as well, and it'll be recorded. I'd love to see you in the uh, uh, in the training room. And we're still trying to work on maybe getting an affiliate to bring us some goodies for the people that like to be in the uh, training room for that uh, lecture. So I'd love to see you all. And again, just a series of all of the classes that we have here as well. And then I know uh, Fred uh, 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 Fernando, it's also, uh, you know, thinking about maybe having an uh, outside excursion in August. And I'll have uh, Fernando talk a little bit when he comes up and talks. All right, next slide, please. And okay. take a look at this also, you guys. It, we publish these calendars now, you know, right. months in advance. Right. So if you scroll with the slides, there's multiple slides and you can go all the way. I think we're for this quarter, we're all the way out. Um, and so there's a bunch of social events coming up as well. Even this month, we're having a happy hour here on a Tuesday. Yeah. Um, and so, so make sure to mark your calendars for all those things. Look for the social events yeah. too. Awesome. Just the trains, yeah. All right. 
Awesome. Thank you, Sonia. Let's go ahead and continue. I think, Ed, you're next. Oh, my apologies. <laughs> my bad, my bad, my bad. Looking good, Ed. Oh, looking really sharp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like a <laughs> here. Uh, 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 Sonia, so, Sonia, give us some natural. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm just going to. I think I feel like this is a good spot for me, but um, so I one of the things that we've been hearing about uh, in this uh, this this market all last week, and I'm actually going to share my screen as so I think oh, that's, and that's good too. Hi everyone. So um, I just want to give you some tools. <laughs> Um, if you guys, you know, I was going to say that we can talk about the, what, what are we doing to get our offers accepted? However, we're, we have that class on Friday as well. Um, but there is a great, you know, the shift book. It's not just for when we start being on a downturn market. It is all of that stuff. Like Gary Keller says, is very timeless. Um, so if you want to refer back to this information, I just want to quickly share this with you. Uh, how many are you guys hearing out there in your conversations with with people that buyers, for instance, some of them are saying like, well, maybe we want to wait until the prices come down a little bit. Um, right. Obviously, the bigger issue for us in this area is that we're not getting there's too many buyers, but there are some people who are wanting to wait. Right. And timing the market is not really something that we should be doing. So I just want to share this, this math with you. Um, <clears throat> in the shift book, they talk about four strategies to overcome buyer reluctance. This is on page 188. They're talking about uh, the hazards of timing the market, right? Which is the thing I'm going to uh, talk to you guys about real quick. There is an opportunity to trade up in a shifting market, which is really interesting. So you should be able to explain that to your clients. And then we also have, how do we narrow the field for a buyer, right? So you don't, you front load your time with them so that you're not running around looking at 55 properties. And, um, and number four, finding best buys and doing best buy lists. I don't know if you guys follow, for instance, Jay Papazan or anybody like that on Instagram or anywhere else, but I happened to see his post yesterday or two days ago, and he his post said him and Wendy Pap Papazan were in a post with a younger girl, and they said, basically, oh my gosh, so fun to have, um, you know, lunch with investor girl Brit and for someone who's accomplished so much in so little time and it, then it was a picture of them and so of course i looked at who the investor girl Britt is i'm telling you that is exactly what she had done with just an instagram account which is giving people best buy list hey do you want to get on my list like investors do you want to get on my list i scour the market all day long for all kinds of other buyers do you want me to put you on one of my best buy lists where i just publish the things that i see as the best buys in these areas for whatever reason and a lot of them were land that then she ended up building storage storage units on that for herself and that's where she was getting the credibility but my point is that any of these things, like a best buy list, might not be something that feels super timely, like that might seem ancient to you. And yet you have to think, how does this look in today's world, right? So, um, but back to the timing the market. So when we're looking at the actual numbers, I'm just gonna share my screen here so you guys can uh, follow along. But you may wanna have a way to sort of write this down for your clients as you're talking to buyers on, why maybe waiting is not, uh, you know, you, you may not want to just, just be timing the market like this. So because here's historically speaking, what we know is that if, and, and you know what, Fernando's here, so you might correct me, but this is uh, sort of a generalized idea, right? So if, if the prices fall eventually by 5%, the interest rates are going to go up by about half a percent, right? So the, the relationship, you guys can see it, right? So if it's 10%, uh, I should really say down on this, right? Down, then the interest rates go up by roughly. Historically speaking, that's pretty much what we're seeing, what we see over the course of, the his of history. So let's take an example. So let's say that you guys have a buyer and they want to buy a $1 million property. And right now, let's say that they qualify for 
This gives them a payment of 4774 per month right now. And the total interest on this property ends up being uh, on a 30 year loan, right? Mm -hmm. This is what you're looking at. All right. So let's say that they're like, ah, we don't want to buy because we think that the buyer, the, the market's going to go down. Okay. Option number one, let's say it goes down by 5%. So now they're going to get this $1 million home for 950. Their interest rate goes up to 4.5%. Their payment becomes 4813. And the total interest becomes 782863. All right, so you take this versus this, and you have a difference of about 64K. Okay. So now Obviously, they paid 50 grand less already. So in reality, they're still paying $14,000 more than they would today. Everyone overall. with me, right? Overall. Overall. Overall, right? So, I mean, I'm just saying, people don't think about this. In the shift book, they're using a $200,000 example, which is why I'm not sharing that graphic with you, because it doesn't make any sense in our market. But let's just say we take another example real quick, one more. So let's say the market actually goes down by 10%, right? So now they're gonna get this house for 900 grand, of course. And now their interest rate is 5%. It's up a whole percentage from the original. So now their payment, right, is gonna be <clears throat> four, oops, four, eight, three, one. So just a little bit more, pretty much the same, right? A little more. But now their total interest <clears throat> is $839,302. Got you on the back end. <laughs> exactly. So now you're looking at a difference of 120 k And mind you, they paid 100000 less here than up here. So you've got 20, they're still, you know, losing 20 grand. So do you, what we want to do is we want to avoid timing the market like this because it doesn't really like if you ask gary keller when's the best time to buy a house the answer is always 20 years ago right so in reality it's about can they afford the payment right most people are payment buyers at the end of the day and uh can they hold if things change right because at the end of if it's a wealth building conversation and that's why they're doing this hopefully then then you've got a deal in there Right now, if you want to do this the opposite way around, so for instance, you say, okay, everyone is still overbidding by 5%. You do it the same way. Okay. But, but, uh, so you add 5%, let's say somebody wants to trade up in this market. So someone's buying a $1 million house and, uh, or I'm sorry, let's say they're, they're, they're selling their house and they're going to buy. Right. So they get maybe 5% more in this market but they want to buy something that's double the price. And now 5% on that is even more. The way you figure out how they win on that conversation is how many years does it take for the appreciation to take over? So if you're looking at one, someone going from $1 million property to $2 million and on both, both occasions, making a little more here, but also paying still more on the up leg, it takes them about two years for appreciation at a 10% rate a year to already make them more money on that more expensive property, right? So, so I'm just, my point here is that let's make sure we're able to do this and, and break it down for buyers. So when is a good time for me to come over and show you how you can actually, you know, save money in this market versus, you know, so forth and so forth. And if it is that we are still in the overbidding market, for instance, right now here on the coast, then it's about the wealth building conversation and keeping that conversation focused towards the future, right? If, if that's the goal, which for most people it is, All right? So again, this is in the shift book, uh, page 188 and 189. If you wanna look at these, there's also more information about those, um, those uh, uh, sorry, the, the, buy, the best buy lists and things like that. And if you want to check out that Instagram for that girl, it's Investor Girl Brit. 
So you can you can see what she's doing with the investors by providing them. Yeah. So those are my two tidbits, and uh, I hope that that's useful. If you need any help with this conversation, let me know. That's awesome stuff. <laughs> Love that. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Sonia. Yeah. Excuse me. All right. Let's uh, continue. So, Ed, I think you're next. <clears throat> All right. The price is right. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> hey, look. I got, I got my own logo in there. It's not, not my logo. In fact, uh, you want to. Uh... Oh, wait. Get some music in there, too? All right, hey Natalie, can I, can I show my screen here? All right, let's have some fun. Let's uh, give away some coffee and let's learn about the market. Today, we are driving east a little bit to go to Carson. We're going to check out Carson today. City of Carson. City of Carson. All right. All right. So, first thing I want to, before we, get, before we jump into the prices, right, and look at some properties, let's look at the question for you guys. Uh, inventory is super low right now, right? Everyone's, yeah, everyone's inventory is super low. Uh, hold on to that thought because let's look at what's actually happening with inventory. And I'm going to point this out in Carson, but this is a conversation I've had with several people in the last week. You may want to look, open up InfoSparks and see if what I'm, if what I'm saying now applies to whatever market you want to talk to a seller about or buyer about. Because when we look at Carson, all right, so here's the median sales price in Carson. Uh, in the last 12 months, it's up 24.1% median sales price. 24.1%. That's a whole lot of, that's a whole lot of. Carson hasn't that. seen that rise in 20 years. That's, that is in, just insane. That's it's going to keep that way, right, Ed? It's going to keep going. It will never change. It's going to 24% in, to infinity. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I would not, I wouldn't. I, for, for a client who earned 24% in their property, I would be like, you know what? Take that money and, uh, you know, enjoy it, bless it, because you'll probably never see an increase of that amount in one year ever again, at least not percentage-wise. Okay, but here's what I really want to talk about. So when we look at inventory, how many homes are on the market? Actually, it's flat. Year over year, there are as many homes on the market right now as there were a year ago. So inventory is no no. When we look at a snapshot is what we're talking about right now, that snapshot, how many homes are on the market right now this minute? It's about the same as it was 12 months ago. It bounced, you can see on this graph, it bounced down a little bit, but when you, 12 months ago, we were right there. It's about, it's about where we were. However, when you look at total size, how many homes sold 2021 versus 2020 in the same time? We're up 92%. 92% more homes have sold in 2021 than in 2020. That's and if you think, double. and if you think about it, every one of those, every, every, every one of these sites started as a listing, which means there's actually been 90, 92% more listings in 90, in 2021 than in 2020. Well, how the hell can that happen? Didn't you just say it was flat? Anybody, can anyone figure this jigsaw puzzle out? Because they're selling as soon as they go on the market. Days on the market, 50, 56% lower. So it means your buyer at any given time, yeah, it's the same amount as there was last year, perhaps in your market might be lower. But if you look like over the course of two or three months while they've been looking, there's actually been 92% more homes that came through that conveyor belt than last year. So inventory is actually not lower. We actually have had more homes sell. There's been more listings by far this year than last year. It's just that, they're moving so fast because we have a ton more buyers right now. And that's really the issue. We have a ton more buyers in the market shopping for homes than we did last year. Did everybody follow that? That's, that's, I, I, I love stuff like this. I, I, you know, I'm not really in production anymore, but when I was in production, I used to come looking like in post parks. I used to always be looking like, what's a story I can tell that no one else is telling? And here's one that you can tell. You can put that on social media right now and you can be like, hey, a lot of people are telling you inventory is really low. Did you know that we've actually had 92% more homes that have been on the market than we did last year? And now you got people's attention and they want to know more. So there you go. So that's something you might want to look at. And, and by the way, we see that here when we see the new listings, new listings hitting the market, we're actually up 52% this year versus last year. And if you look at the trend, you can see we've been going down, down, down. And in the last 12, what is that? Since about October of 19, 
we're on a trend going up of more listings hitting the market. That's some good stuff. I thought I thought that was really interesting. Hopefully, you guys like that too. All right, so now let's go. Uh, uh, once the supply is down, uh, we'll talk about that some other time because we're pressed for time a little bit. Okay, now let's have some fun and give away some coffee. All right, uh, this here. Whoa, hey, whoa. Property number one is. Let's zoom in here off the Harbor Freeway and 223rd. I believe that is. Well, maybe it's Doris Po. All right, so here you've seen it on the map. Uh, hold on. Oh, there we go. All right. Here it is, which by the way, I also wanted to show you too. Hopefully you will never list a property and use a photo like that. I mean, that, that's not, that, that's not one that just like pulls you in and makes you want to see more. Right. I mean, that's, uh, that's, that's not, that's not very inviting, but I wanted to show you because if you feel like if you're new and you're like, Oh my God, how am I going to compete with these new agents? These agents who have been around a while, just show them the photos and be like, look, this is what other agents are doing. You know, here's what I can do with a professional photographer. Okay, anyways, this this place in Carson is a three bedroom, one and a half bath, a thousand ninety two square feet. Uh, comes with two garage spaces, built in eighty five. It was on the market for eight eight days when it sold. By the way, all the properties I ever show you all have sold it in the last thirty days. Come and check out this beautiful condo. You wouldn't know it by the photo, but this two story home has three bedrooms, one full and one half bath. Sitting in a 19, uh, uh, just shy of 1,100 square foot living space. The interior is newly remodeled. New beautiful wood laminate floors and moldings included paint and many others. All right, the rest I told you. Okay, so. It's a condo? That was a bad house. Oh. It's a condo. And look at these photos. This is, <laughs> these are so bad. This is like the worst photos I've seen in a while. So any, hopefully anybody on this call would do a far better job with marketing than this. So you, you know, just to, just so you guys know what it, what what is out there, that you could have done a much better job on this. And that's probably not even a iPhone camera. That is probably yeah, probably sold thing. in five days. <laughs> this, this, one, this one is my superness about it. This this one is my favorite here. A hallway with a toilet at the end of it. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's just that's that's just wrong. Uh, anyway, what's on top of the uh, toilet? Panoramic. Or something. Uh, with, with with something. Uh, or something. <laughs> yeah, something says, uh, "Please find me some better marketing." All uh, right there. Uh, anyways, okay. So, what do you guys think on on the price on this thing? We're gonna open it up for some price. Well, where's my chat bar so I can be fair about this? All right, hold on. Let me stop my sharing. We're gonna open it up for bidding. You can put in, I, oh, I guess, how am I gonna do this live now? Hold on, I did not think about this. Um, all right, I'm gonna have to do it. 475. 475, what else we got? 475 for Jim. We got 785 on Zoom. You know what, next time I'm gonna have to, have, I'm gonna have to pass out like little tickets that you guys can write down the price. 475. 529. 529. We got 725. 480. Max has got 480. Anybody else? 495. 495. 495. 495. 495. 495. Six seventy-five for a two-bedroom condo in Carson. Okay, the the sold price is four forty-five. Thank you. I won. And the winner is I believe Jim is the winner. Jim Z. Jim will be very. Jim will be captaining. Do I get a uh, Starbucks for life or just coffee in office for life? It's easy. <laughs> it's, 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 it's pizza, and you might get two coffee out of there, or you might get one depending on what you order. Right? Right. It's like, what's it? Yeah, I'm on a budget. I'm on a budget. All right, awesome. let me go back. Property number two, we'll, we'll make this pretty quick. We might try to run through I did not foresee this whole thing about live and how I was going to take this. All right, here we go. Property number two is located between Harbor Freeway and the 710. Uh, right near Rancho Dominguez. All right, so back out. Harbor Freeway, and Dominguez. Here we go. There, there's the photo they chose as their cover. This is four bedrooms, uh, really three baths, uh, 2,200 square feet. It is a single family home, but you wouldn't recognize it from the cover photo. 
two car garage, uh, 5,500 square foot lot. Welcome to, well, I've got my voice here. Welcome to your newly updated, pristine, move-in ready two-story Carson home. This home features four bedrooms and three bathrooms with your with brand new modern vinyl hardwood floors throughout. Upon entry, you walk into a spacious living room with a cozy fireplace off the living room. Wait, off, cozy fireplace off the living room. There's a, a closed sunroof. This is perfect for lounging in the summertime. This updated kitchen features newly painted cabinets, open shelves, new flooring, and opens to a formal dining room. Blah blah blah. All right, uh, no HOA fee. Central air. Here are some photos. By the way, I will get talking about marketing. They actually have some really nice, this is what the home looks like. Where is it at? That's actually what the home looks like there from the outside. Why they chose the photo they did for their primary photo, I don't know, but I wouldn't have. Uh, so just so you know, I also want to get into marketing a little bit here. because, And also, if I have 18 photos of the same bedroom, like just pick one or two. Like, you know, you already told them this, you gave them the story, like don't, don't, don't run on, right? Don't, don't be like me and have run on sentences. All right, so there we go. There, there's property number two. Hold on a second, hold on. Now let me get ready here for my- Ready? And Kelly, hold on, hold on, Jim. Okay, here we go. I'm taking orders, what do we got? 675. Six, Jim Z, 675. What else? 700. The next has uh, six. 75. No, I'm going to take the in-house orders first. I mean, for people Aaron, Aaron, what would you like for lunch? Yeah. <laughs> no, no. No, uh, that would be 730. 730. Max. 780. Although you guys are going to look at me. You guys get to, the, the people in the back get to see what else is done. Like, you guys are the people who give you like the $1. Can I get the third person? Same thing. Third person. Same thing. Third person. Same thing. Third person. Same thing. Lewis, what would you like to hear? Side of Side of Side Sorry, guys, I, I know this is taking a long time. I'll, I'll try to wrap this up. Yes, yeah, so you've got uh, 675, Lynette, Yolanda, 750, Sissy has 775, Marius has 540, so, uh, Selena has 670, Lynette, 650, and Selena has, did she switch here? 670. All right. The actual price on this property is $880,000. This was, this was actually, this was actually the highest price property in Carson in the last 30 days. So? Yes, this is sold. It was listed at 789 and sold for 880. Max is the winner. This is 19, uh, 19440 Gunlock Avenue. So congrats, Max. We'll get Save me two years on the short sale. Next game should be uh, <laughs> do, do we have what? Next game should be one of the pace for it. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's that's what I'm adding to my short sale. Do we have time for one more? Is it? No, right? no, no, no. We hey guys, we're gonna wrap it up there because uh, no, we just went. I just I talked too much. I, talk, I talked too much, so no one gets the last copy. All right. Awesome. Thanks. Ed. <laughs> All right, so uh, we got one more uh, guest. To make money. <laughs> we got uh, our final guest. We got Fernando Diaz with Homebridge. Fernando. Hey, 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 hey. I can use my computer. I'm signing for the next two seconds. Hey guys, how are you? So real quick, uh, just to give you guys the good, the bad, and the fun uh, that we're gonna have here. Uh, rates, you guys. I uh, know Sonia did a little thing on rates and. What she said pretty much, I agree with all of it in the essence of how it affects your qualifying power as rates move up and prices shift, et cetera, et cetera. But we are currently this week in an anomaly. Uh, the 10 year has dropped to 130, which is crazy that it has considering uh, the inflationary fears are out there in the markets. So uh, take advantage for those clients that are either refinancing or going into escrow, hopefully sooner than later. Uh, rates are really good guys. They're still you know, in the twos for the most part, uh, high twos I would say and even the low threes, depending on your scores and et cetera, et cetera. So that's going really well. Uh, another thing to touch base on guys are, uh, is the investment properties and second homes. 
So those of you guys that are looking to do 1031 exchanges or any of that stuff with your clients, just note that Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac have literally pulled completely out of that market. They don't want those loans or very little of it anyway in their portfolio. But the good news is there's a lot of Wall Street investors that have been coming in and they are actually attacking that market hard. Uh, obviously, Wall Street wants to yield, which means they want uh, return. So don't, don't think that rates are going to be nearly typically as good as they were with Fannie Mae or the cost. That's the, what we're noticing. The biggest difference is, especially on the cost for the non-owner and second home loans. So that's the uh, second thing I would say. Uh, the third thing, which Simon touched based on, guys, is in August, we have yet to pick a date, but we are working on it. I think we've narrowed it down to about two uh, Fridays of August. We are going to do a uh, kayaking and paddle boarding down in the Redondo Marina, followed by a little happy hour right there. Uh, probably start around one o'clock so that we can be done by 2.30ish, three, and then roll on into the happy hour for a little bit. So a little fun for all of you guys to enjoy. And I don't know if there's anything else we should play on. So Trying to go fast here because I know you guys are short on kind of time. Anything else? Any questions? Anything about that? I don't know if there's any questions on the screen. I can't see it here. That's it. So you foresee the uh, interest rate in the next... Uh, uh, good question. I foresee interest rates moving up aggressively. Uh, and, and probably not this year, but I would say at the beginning of next year. He's absolutely yeah. right. That's my 44-year prediction. So. Uh, we, we haven't even... You know, all fine and well, the book that Sony was reading and everything, I respect the book, but I respect experience more than books because books are taking a generalization on everything that's happened in the history. But let me tell you folks, nobody has understood what the ramifications are on this pandemic yet because we've been getting stimulus checks. They can't even get the people to get back to work because they have 18 to 20 more weeks left on their unemployment. There are people, uh, places, hotels, everybody is short of workers because they're making more than unemployment and stimulus. So after this is all over, and after they, after the government finally sh shuts down and goes for the people, all these old people that have investments and lifts the moratorium off in a September now, we don't even know what the effect is this is going to be. We could have another 2008 crash and the interest rates are definitely going to go up to to subsidize it. They're, they're going to go up because we have a democratic one, one of the things that we're seeing guys especially with the september 30th okay, date is uh, the potential well first of all keep in mind that the government is huge on trying to keep people in their homes but at some point here if, if a rework can't be done or a modification you're going to you know either see a foreclosure or you're going to see a for sale you know, the history what, is you give enough people have. enough slack, they hang themselves. There's a percentage of this market that's going to hang themselves no matter what. So there are going to be a plethora of foreclosures and short sales as a result of this pandemic. I don't care what anybody says. That's my prediction. And so, uh, listen, they're, if they're going to go up half a point, maybe they're not going to go up that quick. Let me tell you, the market is going to get volatile first, and then the interest rates are going to start slowly moving up. But there is going to be a lock time up there. But, but by the end of next year, at this time next year, we're going to see higher interest rates. They're going to be around five, four to five percent. But in looking in the entire picture of this, I think it's going to be a great opportunity for real estate agents. Well, you know, there's always if, opportunity, guys. I did this always. The worse it gets, the better. So not been the worst crash in history. You know, you're not fear. It's just a brain. Oh, I'm, 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 not, I'm not. I'm not fearing it. But I'm just saying that the the, the, the market. Uh, all good agents uh, should prepare for a, a, a bad market as well as a good market. Hey, look at what's happening now. Our, we, can't even, we can't even sell properties because people are bidding us at stupid prices. So you need to prepare what's going to happen in the future for short sales and everything else. Well, just to touch on what Evan on that price point in cars at 800,000. Uh, I think I did that loan. <laughs> I've not had gun lock since another. We just closed it. Wow. Yeah. How do you get an appraisal? That's it. Oh, another thing, real quick. You guys want to talk about appraisal? So I'll give you guys a quick update there. Uh, first of all, let's look at it historically over the last year and a half. Here's what we're seeing. Some of the AMCs are no longer taking rushes because every deal is a rush and, and it would flood the system doing that. And so that whole game where you guys try to get an appraisal back in 10 days before the inspection's up, everybody's onto that now. So that's out. 
uh, for the most part. So uh, the other thing too is uh, what we're noticing in terms of quality overall, there is a handful of appraisers out there that just made too much money in the last year and a half. And obviously they, they've broken every record income wise probably that they've ever had. And for that reason, they're burnt out. They have a, you know, a different attitude. Uh, so you, you're going to see some of that. But once again, here's one thing that I'll point out with you. I just posed one Gary. Um, and the first appraiser came in 115000 under the sales price, which was obviously a big problem for our buyer. Uh, and then we immediately you know, striked it and sent another one out, and he came in and pulled out. So explain that to me. How do you get that far off? Oh, so it goes to show you that if you put a little bit of in, you know, <laughs> can work it out. It can, you know, it can happen if it's realistic. Uh, and, you know, keep in mind, these appraisers or appraisals are just somebody's opinion. And if they're not familiar with the area, you know, you can literally cross the street in some neighborhoods and it's a completely different, you know, shift, even though everything looks the same, uh, maybe school district or whatever. So, yeah, you, you really need to be on point and have your facts, especially on your listings. Uh, and bring that information to these appraisers because they need to know. Yeah, especially when they remove the contingency, the appraisal contingency. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it. Unless you guys have any other questions for me. All right. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Fernando. Mm -hmm. All right, team. Well, that concludes. And I apologize that we went slightly over our time. And I definitely respect each and everyone's time. So thank you again. Again, uh, just to announce in person team meetings, classes are in full effect, please, please, please take a full advantage and be here part of the family. So that's it for now. Thank you, guys. Have a good day.